OK, this is my Altair 8800 computer. It's an Arduino replica of the Altair 8800 that I built into a kind of nostalgic looking case. Today we're going to have a look at productivity software. So the Altair 8800, that is the original of this computer, was a groundbreaking machine. It was the first commercially available desktop computer. It revolutionized business because it actually gave people computing power on their desktops. It was the first desktop PC. Now, it was of huge interest, obviously, to the scientific community, both in the advancement of computer science and to mathematicians and physicists and astronomers for calculating stuff. However, it was also hugely interesting to business. People in business wanted to exploit this for productivity. And that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at a spreadsheet that runs on this computer. In my particular implementation of this thing, we've got the cable out the back there. So I'm just going to take that out, put the back back on. Okay, and then we will set the computer over there so I can connect this cable to a terminal session on my laptop. So let's plug it in and we should see it come to life. There we go. And now we're going to fire up TerraTerm. There we go. And we are connected to the terminal. We're connected to the serial interface via USB, so let's just have a look. We've got a list of commands we can get. We can get also a list of available disk images. So today we're going to be looking at SuperCalc. There is WordStar as well, which is a word processor, but we're going to be looking today at SuperCalc 2, which is a spreadsheet. So SuperCalc 2 is a CPM program, so if we first need to load up the CPM operating system. So we're going to have to set up some disk images. So on disk zero, I'm going to load up disk image number one, which is SuperCalc. And there we go, I've mounted disk one in drive zero. In drive one, we're going to mount up the SuperCalc disk, which is disk six. And then in, and then we're going to run the disk boot ROM, the built-in thing. And there we go. We've booted into CPM. And so we can now see here, we can see the CPM boot disk. And then we're going to have a look on the B drive, which is disk one. And that's got our SuperCalc program. So let's fire up SuperCalc. And we can see the... The computer's doing something. And here's the SuperCalc welcome screen. So question mark will give us some help. Let's have a look at that. There we go, a little bit of welcome text. Even explains what a spreadsheet is because a lot of people using this for the first time would never have heard of a spreadsheet. They would never have seen anything like this before. And so there's a little bit of background information about what a spreadsheet's supposed to do. Okay, and there we are. We're into SuperCalc. Now, interestingly, it's, it's obviously sending some control codes to the terminal to change things like the cursor color. Now, there is also an online help screen in here, which tells us basic things. If we type a slash, it's going to be a, a command, so it'll be things like save the file or load another file from disk or quit. If we want to type text, we've got to start it with a double quote. If you want to move to a different cell that's elsewhere in the spreadsheet, you type equals. Now, that seems odd to us because being accustomed to Microsoft Excel, equals is how you start a formula. But back in SuperCalc, equals just meant go to that cell. Exclamation mark forces recalculation. This is an interesting thing, actually. This spreadsheet is capable of gracefully handling circular references. So we'll have a little look at that in a minute because that's actually quite interesting. Anyway, navigation should be cursor keys or control E, X, S and D. I'm probably going to use those keys because I, I have a feeling that this terminal emulator is not brilliant for the cursor keys. So anyway, back to the spreadsheet. So here we are. And yeah, I can navigate around using those Control E, S, X, and D keys, and I can do stuff. And that can be stuff like typing a number 
into a cell. Now you notice I'm not editing inside the cell, I'm editing right down the bottom of the screen there. That's how things used to work back when this was the only spreadsheet. And so we can put some values in there, we can enter some text. And we can, you know, so if we just go uh, here, we can say What's interesting is it does seem to understand where my cursor is heading. And so if I'm typing like this, it's doing that. Whereas if I go here and then I move my cursor to here, it learns which way I'm typing and it takes me to the next cell. That's a really cool feature and quite an intelligent one for a program as kind of rudimentary and ancient as this. I think that's pretty cool. Anyway, let's have a look at the command list. So we've got a bunch of different commands we can do. And in a minute, I am going to blank out the spreadsheet. So I'm going to do slash B. Let's have a go at that then. So I'm actually going to I see. So if I want to blank out a cell, this is something in Excel nowadays you just hit delete and it would delete that value. But here we have to do a slash B and it removes that value. So I'm just going to go through and clear out this spreadsheet. Actually, do you know what I might do? I might just see, is there a new spreadsheet? Right, so zap is what we want. So we're going to do slash Z and yes, there we go. We've wiped the spreadsheet. Let's cook up a hypothetical business use case for this spreadsheet. Let's say we're a manufacturer. We make and export widgets and we're going to try and calculate what our profit is per widget. So we're going to have materials. We're going to have We're going to have labor, we'll have a operating cost for things like lighting and heating of our manufacturing plant and the electricity to run the machines. We're going to have the shipping cost. Oops. And we're going to have tax. And we're going to say that tax is actually going to be 10% of materials plus labor. So that's going to be C2 plus C3 times 0 0.1. At the moment, that's zero, but that is a calculation that's in there ready to work. Now, then we're going to do okay, our materials cost for making per widget is going to be £4.95. Our labour cost per widget is going to be £5.95 which already sets our tax at £1.09. Our operating costs which we will calculate out as well actually what we'll do here is we'll say that our entire manufacturing facility is going to cost let's say £120 per day to keep running and then in a day we expect to produce 1,000 widgets. So we're going to say that that one is actually D4 divided by 1,000. So 12 pence per widget is our kind of plant operating costs. And then 
bear in mind this is all nonsense hypothetical it doesn't really matter what we're actually doing here um, and then our shipping cost per widget is going to be three pounds fifty and so so far we can actually figure out what's the total cost of manufacturing a widget and it's going to be now I don't know if there's a way of summing ranges here I haven't figured it out yet so I'm just going to say that the total cost of manufacturing each widget is going to be the sum of those things above so it is C6 plus C5 plus C4 plus C3 plus C2 15 pounds 61 then we're going to say our retail price I'm finding it a little bit quirky in terms of the navigation I don't know whether that's a quirk of the terminal or if that's just something that people got used to when they were using this program maybe it's actually a bug in the program who knows anyway so our retail price per widget we're going to decide is we're going to, want to sell these widgets at £29.99 which means that our profit is going to be C9 minus C8. So there we go, we're going to make £14.38 profit per widget. And this is where this computer would have really impressed people, is somebody would have shown this in a meeting and would have been up on the screen there and perhaps somebody would have piped up, that labour cost is a bit high, why don't we move our manufacturing abroad? So we'll outsource our manufacturing and we'll actually move the labour cost down to 395 And so except that that means then we have to ship the materials out there and then ship the product back to the market. So that actually adds another four pounds to the shipping cost. So that would have gone up to seven pounds 50, which means that actually we make a profit of 12 pounds 58 now. So maybe that's not such a brilliant idea. So that's the kind of thing that people would have used in business. They would have actually used it for calculating stuff like this and getting a quick answer. So it's kind of cool, isn't it? And that is one of the first available spreadsheets for business. But here's a kind of cool thing that this will also do. Let's say we've had notice from our shipper that the shipping cost is actually going to go up by one pound each successive year for the indefinite future. Here's a cool thing that this spreadsheet can do that more modern spreadsheets can't do. This spreadsheet can gracefully handle circular references. So let's start with the value 0.5. So we're going to say the cell below it is equal to the cell above plus 0.5 so that's going to be F2 plus 0.5 okay now here's the weird thing so if we put in a zero there So now we can do a cool thing. We can say, let's suppose we are in. Let's suppose we are in the the year nineteen seventy four, and we want the shipping cost. Bear, bear with me a second. So we're just going to change the shipping cost. I'm I'm having a bit of struggle here, actually. That's interesting. We've got no, okay. I'm having a bit of a struggle navigating this just because I'm so used to mouse clicking and I'm so used to Microsoft Excel. This is a really functional program, but I'm actually struggling to use it. Back in the day, obviously, people would wouldn't have known about Microsoft Excel and they would have just got used to the function keys and actually probably been much, much faster 
than me on this. Anyway, so that shipping cost is not just £3.50 now, it's £3.50 plus whatever it's going up by each year. Um, so that's actually 3.5 plus F2, which at the moment is still 3.5. Now we're going to go off and create a circular reference here. So we're going to say that actually F2 is equal to F3 plus 0.5. Now bear in mind that F3 is F2 plus 0.5. So what we're going to do here is F3 plus 0.5. And now we know that in 1974, actually let's just go down here, 1974, plus F2. So in 1976, we seem to have skipped a year, but we could figure that out. Um, in 1976, our shipping cost is going to be £5.50. And our profit is going to go down to £12.38. So then we can actually now do an iterative calculation. So if I hit the exclamation mark, that's going to make it recalculate the spreadsheet. In 1977, our shipping cost goes up to £6.50, our profit goes down. And I can continue forcing incremental recalculation. And we can see it's actually doing a bunch of stuff. This is probably not a brilliant example, but this is the kind of thing somebody might use to iterate a series of calculations and actually look at a series of stuff over time. So anyway, that's a little taste of SuperCalc 2. So that's actually a quite a rudimentary interface here. But as you can see, you could probably do quite a lot of stuff with this. We're not limited to just the screen area here. As you can see, it scrolls down and it scrolls across. And so there's actually quite a large number of cells. I can't remember what the range is. So anyway, that is a quick, quick look at SuperCalc 2 one of the first spreadsheet programs available for one of the first desktop computers. So as you can see, it's quite possible to do productivity type work on this very, very basic and rudimentary computer. I hope that's been interesting. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.